nice is it to be able to have Robert Woods out there uh, at this first week of OTAs and uh, even as you, you know, take good care of him in his recovery, but to have him out there needing to, you know, build chemistry between him and Ryan as fast as possible, this time crucial and very helpful? Well, I mean, I think any time that we can get out into the practice field and be able to coach players, I think is, uh, you know, is critical. I think that, uh, you know, Robert, his, his experience in, in, you know, different places that he's been, you know, in his NFL career and what he's done continue to improve. I think it's just a, you know, he's been a great leader and then he's just, you know, he's doing what he can do right now. Getting on the field two days in a row for him, though, how, how important is that to be able to bounce back from one practice to the next? Yeah, I mean, I think we're just always trying to look at the schedule, Corey, as far as what we're doing. And tomorrow we'll be in a different schedule and come back on Thursday. And, you know, um, everybody's got a different plan. So some guys come in in the morning and, and, and feel a certain way. Um, and then we try to, you know, pull back or dial back um, based on how they feel. And as long as they feel well, uh, you know those guys that you know that are out there rehabbing appreciate the way that our guys practice when we have guys in yellow jerseys so they're conscious of hey maybe this guy you know is working through something and um, you know they're just conscious of, of you know being around that person and letting them work let them get the the stuff that we need in that, that team period it looked as if Malik has already maybe made some adjustments to his delivery he talked about footwork how much already has he? Well, it's going to, you know, I think every day is going to be, um, you know, a learning process for, for all those rookies, um, you know, Malik included. And, and, and his ability to, to, to process and, and work through things quickly is, you know, your mind may know where to go, and then sometimes your body has to, has to move with it in sync. And I think that's what they've been working on uh, as, they, as they go through their individual drills and hoping that it carries over to the seven on seven. Pretty nice progress so far. Yeah, I mean, his great attitude, willingness to work, comes in early, you know, meets with all those guys, and then taking advantage of the reps that he gets. There's so many new receivers and tight ends for Ryan this year. How, how important is this time to kind of lay that foundation and get those guys all on the same page? I told Teresa, it's always important anytime we can get out on the field and coach our guys and, and take advantage of, of, of working. And, and hopefully the three weeks that we had in phase uh, two, uh, Working on details and the techniques and fundamentals, you know that has to now tra translate to the seven-on-seven seven stuff that we're that we're doing. Uh, and if it doesn't, then we have to you know go back and, and show them, hey, we just we just did this for three weeks, and now there's a body over there, maybe a man or may, maybe his own coverage. Um, but we have to translate those. So we saw some of them uh, yesterday, not enough of them. I think we probably saw more of them today. Trayvon was a little bit in and out today. Is he making progress, uh, in, in your opinion, from, from last time or something? Uh, yeah, I mean, in my opinion. Um, it, they all kind of come along differently. You know, we're just trying to make sure that, you know, everything that he does, he's, he's continuing to improve. You know, we talked to him, you know, a little bit about ball security, route running, you know, every day, just like Malik and Nick and all these guys offensively. There's a lot of terminology. There's a lot of places that they line up, and I think that he's working hard and he's trying to improve. Does Mike, with some of those issues, Mike, is that is that part of a thing that's for him? I'm sorry. Does he have allergy issues? Is that I, I don't, I'm not going to talk about anybody's allergies to pollen right now. I think everybody's got allergies. Is this conditioning for Phil? Uh, just the reps that we put him in there. I, I don't think there's any limitations right Mike, now. How, how much different about? maybe is it, Mike, for the for the second <clears> year <throat> guys, and hope, how much you're hoping those guys can make a jump after being around here for a year? Uh, I mean, I think that that's you know. What we hope is that they, they took the you know, coaching and, and the opportunity, experience, whatever they had um, last year, looking, you know, going down that list of, of Caleb or Dylan or Racy and, um, you know, Molden and, and, and Naquan Jones. And I know that there's other guys, Tory Carter, I'm just trying to think. But hopefully the, the experience that they did have, um, whatever that was in a game, uh, trying to be more comfortable just coming into the building and, and knowing how things operate. Even looking at like Dylan Cole, somebody mentioned today, Dylan Cole, this was a player that was added midway through the, the, the season and, and it was always just continuing to play catch up. And then, you know, having the offseason program to get some of these details just more vocal, um, you know, he's communicated more and I think just so much more comfortable. And I think that's a good example to just, you know, having some of this, you know, foundation that's so critical. Mike Taylor said that it was important for him to be here with to show the young guys kind of the way. How important and critical do you think it is for guys to be here to show that leadership to the younger players? 
I think it's critical um, any time that we have an opportunity to coach the guys out on the field. And, you know, that, that's our job. We, we feel strongly in the job that we can do to, to, to coach and develop players and to teach them. Um, you know, we, we went through this conversation with the rookies, and I think it's the same thing with the veterans um, or anybody. You know, when you're working or conditioning, you know, in the first couple phases with, with three or four other guys, you know, you tend to, to go a little harder. And, you know, I know that everybody that, that's not here, you know, they'll be in shape, they'll be conditioned, and they'll be ready to go. So as, as far as, you know, do I think it's important? I always think it's important when we get to coach players because that's what we do. That's why we come to work. Um, and, and I think that, that the guys are here, they get something out of it. He's grown up a lot since last year. Is growing up a lot. Yeah. You see the same thing. I, I do. I do. And and again, Des would be one of those other players that that uh, you know that that Jim was was talking about going in their second year. You know, you see um, improvement each and every day. There's a great attitude, um, and uh, you know, continue to to work with them and excited. And I know Ryan's, you know, and Logan and Malik are, you know, excited to be working with them. Hart mentioned how he could already feel the competition level rising on that D-line. How much have you seen the competitiveness overall, not just that in that specific position group, but the last couple of days? Well, I mean, it's 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 professional football. And, and our job with 90 players or 91 or whatever we're going to end up with, um, you know, is to try to create competition at each position because that's going to that's gonna make everybody better. Uh, and, and I try to tell them the ones that deserve to be here, they'll be here. And there's no set number of position players like, oh, we're going to keep this many defensive linemen or this many. If you deserve and you've earned the right to be here, uh, John and I have to find a way to keep you here. What's been the most encouraging time. thing you've seen the last couple of days? Well, I would just say probably the improvement from, from yesterday uh, to today. Um, you know, I think that's that's the biggest thing, is, is that all the coaching points that we made after the meetings or after practice yesterday, which we'll do here in a little bit. I think that translated. Guys came in, you know, Ola, you know, came in with a great attitude, was out early, and then that carried all the way through practice. I noticed it the entire day. And, you know, I'm going to make reference to that when we go in here and meet, that just how you start your day, you know, sometimes we'll, we'll determine, you know, how that entire thing goes. I asked Taylor if, if he needed a drama-free season, and he kind of said, we all know that's just not possible. Probably not. <laughs> you just kind of... <laughs> Accept that as no. I mean, I, I just think that there's always going to be distractions, whether that be with a player, that be with a family member, and not just. And I'm not just talking about Taylor. There's going to be things that that come up that we have to deal with. Um, so you can't you can't eliminate distractions. You just have to be able to handle them, and uh, you know we'll handle them. His attitude's been fantastic, and I've I've enjoyed having him here, and you know. It, it's been good for everybody. But specifically for him, there's bound to be something that comes up. I think there'd be something that would come up for you, you know, this year, Paul, with with your job or whatever's going on. So I don't know why Taylor or me would be any different. You've got a couple open spots on the offensive line. How do you envision maybe that process playing out from now until September, as far as mixing guys in and out and giving a lot of guys opportunity? Well, I think the ones. Uh, you know, they all are going to earn, they're all going to have an opportunity. You know, what they do with it will, will determine how many more opportunities they get. Uh, try to find, you know, a good combination that's a winning combination um, and that gives them the best chance to, to succeed and help our football team. So I think that that's going to be probably pretty fluid, Jim. I think just throughout the, the entire offseason, it's hard to identify those guys right now. We're not in pads. You know, it's predominantly a, a passing camp and, the runs that we are installing and, and running against our defense aren't at a pace that, you know, you could really identify anybody uh, in the run game. Mike, in the early going, what are kind of the initial impressions of, of Austin Hooper, how he's kind of tried to acclimate himself? And yeah, the I would say run? very positive. I think very coachable. And for a veteran player that's had success, that's, you know, much like Robert on, on his third team, it's been, been really good to see. Um, you know, this was a guy that, that was in California for a charity event for, for a great cause uh, that, that donates money back to, to foster kids when they turn 18 and took a red eye to be here uh, last week. So if that, that's any indication to the commitment that he has uh, to us and, and trying to earn the respect of his teammates, I think that's a good start.
had that totally in the last couple of years in the offseason. To have them all here the last month and to have that interpersonal, how much have you enjoyed it? And do you already see a benefit to this time? I do. You know, I love it. It's awesome. You know, Carter's here. You know, he can come. His school's, school's done. And, you know, that was something that you missed, you know, not having him, him around, you know, just thinking, you know, through protocols and everything else. So um, personally, you know, that's great to have, to have him be out there and be a part of this while, he, while he's still around. Uh, and, and then just being able to work with players and, and, and communicate and then these guys are building that connection with their teammates and, and with their coaching. Mike, you were featured heavily in the Brady documentary about teammates pushing each other to get the edge. With all the guys that aren't here today, do you feel like your team this offseason has done a good job of getting the edge maybe on the other teams in the league? Uh, I mean, I think that the guys that are here um, have certainly done that. I, I have been in contact with, with everybody you know, on our football team, and I, I know those guys are working. Um, and so when they come back, we'll coach them. But our focus is you know, the entire offseason has been with those players that are here. Uh, that I feel like that's where where it should be. And then you know, when, the, when the ones that want to come back to any part that's voluntary or any part that, that's mandatory, you know, we'll give them the same you know, coaching and the same you know, level of commitment out there on the field. Do you ask guys to just check in at least and let you know their plans if they're not going to be here? Or- just so you, just so you know. Well, I think it, when you get to this point, and, and when you try to make this thing, and try to have connections and relationships with them, um, you, you kind of—I mean, hate to say—I'm not responsible for them, but I feel like I, you know, I'd like to know where they're at and that they're doing okay. So I, I we check in and we communicate, uh, just like the ones that have been here. For some reason, something comes up. Um, you know, we worry about them if it's 7.50, and we've used to seeing them every day at 7.50 before an 8 o'clock meeting. You know, we'll try to track them down and say, hey, is everything okay? You know, it's not that, you know, if you, you're you not coming, that's great. But we, we've seen you for three days, and now all of a sudden we don't see you. You know, we just make sure that you're doing okay. So there's constant communication, uh, comfortable with where that's at, uh, but then make sure the focus is on the guys that are here. Kind of changing his body during the early part of the off season. What's it been like seeing him on the field? Good, you know, and he's working through much like Robert, and, and just trying to build some confidence and, and continue that rehab process. But um, you just see how quickly his body developed when he was able to have somewhat of an off season, um, whether it be with the back or, and unfortunately, the knee. You know, he's he certainly looks different, and you know, it doesn't look like his, his jersey's hanging on a coat hanger. Mike, you spoke last week about getting entitlement out of the organization. Do you feel like there was entitlement in the organization? No, I've said that to our team since I've been here, Jared. I just maybe said it for the first time or you heard it for the first time uh, on the radio. I've always I've always said that. I've always tried to tell our guys that, you know, we, we don't want to uh, think that we deserve something by not having worked for it. So that that's something that we've always said. And I, I hope that the players would echo that and that that would um, come across in how we've operated since I've been here.